Go and make disciples of all nations. This is our mission. It's Joe Melendrez, and welcome to the Mission Driven Podcast. This podcast is designed to assist you in discovering and living God's mission for your life. I want to personally thank you for tuning in to episode four. Our theme today is Get in the Word. It's been an exciting mission driven month for me as I just finished up the God is Good Festival in Germany then headed over to Cleveland, Ohio for the fest, which was a powerful day of faith with over 60,000 people. It was an honor to share the stage with some of the top Christian artists around the country. A highlight for me was learning that the band Casting Crowns are all youth pastors, and they said that most of their music is inspired by real-life stories of youth they've served. So cool. I just got back from a four-day middle school retreat in Mission Springs, California called MSDYR. Shout out to the 100 middle schoolers on retreat and all the incredible leaders. It was a super impactful retreat and I had so much fun being their keynote speaker. As you can see, God is on the move. He's always on the move. God has been up to a lot in my life and I'm so thankful. Really looking forward to being home and spending some time with my family as I miss them so much when I'm on the road. But what has God been up to in your life? How are you doing? How has God been speaking to you? Well, each morning, God speaks to me through a daily devotional called Jesus Calling. I reflect on the scriptures that inspired the reflection and will then write a word or phrase that I feel God is communicating to me on my hand. Last Friday, I was traveling to Cleveland and I wrote the words, sit quietly in God's presence. Upon landing, I received an email from a young man named Alessandro De Santo about this contemplative prayer and meditation app called Halo. We connected and had a great conversation and we came up with ideas to collaborate. As soon as I got off the phone with him, I downloaded the app and wow, it's amazing. I've been praying with it every day since, and I'm so thankful. I told Alessandro that it's not a coincidence that he reached out to me at that time and mentioned that earlier I wrote on my hand, sit quietly in God's presence. And he responded with, seek and you shall find. This is actually the tagline when you open up the app. It's really cool. You see, God's timing is perfect. I believe God was communicating to me to spend more time with him in silence. He knew that that was something that is life-giving, and he provided an opportunity to do this through the app Hallow. And I'm so thankful. So today's mission tip is brought to you by Hallow, the contemplative prayer and meditation app that will bring you closer to God. The mission tip will hopefully give you a little boost on your mission. So today's mission tip is keep showing up. It might be hard sometimes to stay in your prayer routine or keep going to church or spend time with Jesus, but keep showing up. We heard last episode that we face trials and triumphs, but we always got to keep showing up. No matter what you might be going through, know that God is with you every step of the way and you got to keep showing up. Just yesterday, I was tired and felt like sleeping in rather than going to 7 a.m. mass on retreat but I knew I had to keep showing up. So I went, and I'm so thankful I did. Sometimes I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like working out, but I know my body's a temple of the Holy Spirit, and I gotta keep showing up and get back in the gym. So, mission tip for the day, keep showing up. Man, I am so excited about this episode because our mission-driven interview is with a friend and brother in Jesus, Mike Supon. He's going to be talking to us about how to get in the word. We also have a word of the day with my wife, Noel Melendrez, and a very special break it down with one of my favorite tracks off my latest album, Chosen. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Mission-driven podcast. Let's go.
Mission Driven Podcast. I'm here with Noel Melendrez for Word of the Day. Noel, thanks for joining us today. Sure, happy to be here. Great. Uh, man, this, this scripture passage we're about to reflect on, powerful one. We're soaping today from Psalm 51, 10 through 13. Do you mind reading it for us? Sure. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Love it. Love it. So uh, we're going to be breaking this down with the SOAP method. If you're uh, tuning in for the first time, the SOAP method stands for scripture, which Noel just read beautifully. Then we have observation. So uh, we kind of rewrite the uh, Bible passage in our own words. Then we have the application part, how it applies to our life, and then prayer. We make a prayer about this passage. So uh, let's jump into uh, scripture. What, what struck you from, uh, from the passage? Well, I love this verse. I think um, when you know the context, um, this is David's prayer to God. And um, this was after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and he's surrendering, asking God for forgiveness and to create a pure heart in him. And the first time I read this, I was reading it after we had read about Saul and you kind of see this contrast between David and Saul when Saul gets into difficult situations or when he sins or comes up short. He tries to rely on himself to get himself out of the situation versus David. When he sins, he surrenders and goes to God and Mm. asks for forgiveness because he knows what only God can do and that only God can heal him. Only God can create a pure heart in him. And he also knows what's at stake when he's not with God. And he knows that he needs God and his Holy Spirit to sustain him when it says to, to sustain me. Yeah. So, it's, so it's, good. it's just a really great reminder for us, especially when you know um, what happened with Saul and how he, the consequences of him turning away from God constantly and not seeking forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And versus David, who was able to ask for forgiveness and go to God and yeah. how God continued to use him despite the fact that he sinned and fell short, um, which is, you know, that's totally all of us, right? All of us fall short of the glory of God, but that's what's so great about God's mercy. And when we go to God, he gives us that. So, And I feel like, you know, there's two responses. You know, you can go to God and surrender and say, I'm sorry and create a pure heart in me or the opposite and run away and hold on to that. And I feel like that a lot of people are one or the other. That's kind of not in in between, but then there may be some people that, you know, I, I'm going to go, I know I got to get right. So I'm going to try to get right with God. But yeah, it's beautiful points to bring out things that struck me from the scripture passage, uh, pure heart. I'm just like, man, pure heart. Another translation is a clean heart. Uh, I know when I, uh, clean my shoes or my car how like oh man it feels feels good to be clean maybe fresh and i know that if god can do that to my heart uh, on a way bigger level obviously how great that's gonna feel and uh feel renewed um something that struck me was a steadfast spirit within me like to be steady on track with god seems amazing because it's easy to get get off track or like hey like, you know me, like I'll go into, all right, I'm just going to be eating healthy food for a week. And you're like, you come up with these different diets and stuff like that. And it's like, but if I could say steady on just eating healthy food, that would be great. You know, just like trying to stay steady working out. And then I love restore to me the joy of your salvation. Like, oh, there is joy in salvation. Like if we can wrap our head around what's beyond us. There's so much joy with Jesus in heaven. And uh, the last line, super big for me, is grant me the willing spirit to sustain me. I was like dedicated. If I can just stay dedicated, if my spirit is a dedicated spirit, it can sustain me on any journey with God's help. So I want to do that. All right, moving into application. Well, how does this apply to your life right now? 
So like I said before, I really love this verse. And the more I learned about it over time, the more I see the importance of it. Um, it's just a great reminder of how sin can really hurt us and how we really have to openly go to God for redemption. And I think for me, it's a reminder to be more intentional when I seek God's forgiveness, to not only confess the sin, but also ask for the healing, ask for the redemption. Because if you look at what David's doing here, it's not that he's just saying, you know, you know, I messed up. He's saying, you know, God, heal me, create a pure heart in me, um, allow the Holy Spirit to work within me. And I think a lot of times I know I can get caught up in just like telling God, oh, you know, please forgive me, mm -hmm. but not really going beyond that and saying, you know, um, specifically what I'd like for him to restore within me. Yeah. And, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to work within me, like asking for those specific things that I need from him allows it to be a, a complete healing. We need both. We can't just confess the sin. We need to allow, we need to be open to allowing God to heal us. Yeah. You know, if, if we confess our sin and then we just go about our lives and we don't even think about it again, it can be easy to fall into a pattern of repeat, repeating our mistakes. Totally. And that's why, you know, allowing God to heal us, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us, asking God for that. I think that's really important. That's something that I take away from this verse as a reminder, like I should do that more. Yeah. I love it. I remember we went to a concert once. It was a Lecrae concert and he was talking about scars and he said, we should openly tell people about our scars because scars provide hope because they're evidence that there was healing that took place. Obviously, yes, there was some type of injury or some pain of some sort, but yeah, a lot of times we, we might, I know I personally will not, uh, there's like a personal life and there's public life and things like oh, I don't want to share this with people but a lot of times it's our witness our full testimony that really connects to people so we can't like hold back if there's a moment that we can share that can bring people closer to, to God based on your life story and I know for for me for the uh, application part I said I need continual renewal it's not like all right once a month, God, I need renewal. It's like all the time. Yeah, every day. I mean, really every day you can take the time to really ask God, you know, here's where I came up short and I'm asking you to work within me, help me with this. Or, yeah. I mean, there's nothing that's too small for God. Yeah. You know, even the little things totally. that we often think are, oh, he's not going to worry about, or I don't want to bother him with that or whatever it is. You know, those are, those things can build up over time. And that's why, you know, having a open, a relationship with God is so important because yeah. if you think about a relationship, you share all parts of you and yeah. in your best relationships, yeah. best and worst, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know what I'm just saying in your best relationships, yeah. like the relationships oh, yeah. that are the ones that you can, would consider your, I guess your best relationships in your life. Those are the ones are usually where you feel completely open with that person or yeah. you feel like you can be a hundred percent yourself. And you can share the good and the bad and the ugly, and they're going to love you, you know, despite all of that. And right. that, that's what our relationship with God should be. And so sharing the small things, the big joys, the successes and the failures, no matter how big or small they might be, all of that helps to fuel that relationship and allows God to continually, like you were saying, work in you and sustain you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like when I mess up, it weighs on me. And uh, like I'm a details guy and somewhat ADD, so I hyper focus on things. So therefore, if I have a mistake, I'll replay it and replay it and replay it. And then I, the the mistake starts to take me down to an extent. And and I was just listening recently to um, someone who was saying that the devil, like John ten ten says, uh, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. That he's not going to just like you know, uh, just, just punch you in the shoulder. He's going to try to take you out and he knows your weaknesses. And so if I can't get my heart right, 
and get renewed now and I can't go to God and say, you know, create, create a clean heart in me, then the devil could take whatever residue I have in my heart and just kind of spread it out and grow it. And another layer comes on, another layer comes on and it could take me out. Right. But, but I'm never too far from God's love or from his forgiveness or from his mercy or from his grace. It's like the blood of Jesus covers everything, right. all mistakes, all sins. It's been done. The victory has been won. He conquered. Uh, he beat death. Like, so I need to remind myself, Joe, you're a child of God. Joe, you're a citizen of heaven. You're a person of prayer. Joe, you know, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. That's where I feel like that willing spirit, if I can have that dedicated willing spirit, it can really change things in my life. But I, it's like I have to want to become that person and not be a lesser version than the best that God wants me to be. And that's where humility comes in, too. Yeah. Like, that's what struck me, too, about this verse is having the humility to go to God, mm -hmm. you know, not letting pride get in the way. Yeah. You know, if we're really going to surrender to God and really give him all of our th worries, doubts, sins, everything, all parts of us, then we have to be humble enough to admit that we need him yeah. and that we can't do it alone. Yeah. And, you know, and when we don't submit ourselves to him, that's when it's like you said, the devil can go to work because we become more vulnerable to that. Totally. So good. Well, we're going to conclude with prayer. Um, once again, thanks Noel for, for being part of this. Um, really loving soaping uh, on the Mission Driven Podcast. Uh, just want to let you guys know, you guys can soap as well. Feel free to look up the soap method, S-O-A-P. Um, Google it. You can also, there's an app out there called Daily Soap, and you can choose random scripture passages. I actually have created a soap journal, so you can soap through my album. Um, my soap journal is available on my website, jumblenders.com. But it's this is a tool to break down scripture in a very easy way. So just want to encourage you guys as you listen to pray along, but also uh, pull out your Bible and, and or your Bible app and start soaping as well. So uh, let's conclude with prayer. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, help me to receive your peace in a big way right now. I want to be deeply connected to you and I want to be in your presence and I want your Holy Spirit to lead the way. Lord, I know that I am your child. I am your adopted son. Lord, restore my soul. Fill me with your joy and dedication so I can stay fixed on you and fulfill the mission that you have for me. Lord, I pray for everyone listening right now that they may have a clean heart, that they may have a, a pure confession to you saying, Lord, you know, this is where I've messed up and this is where I want to be in you. Lord, I pray that we can be fully in your presence at this moment, that in your presence we may be made clean, we may see as you see, act as you would act, think as you would think. Lord, I pray that we can be still, that we can be still and know that you are God. And Lord, we just ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to work with all of us and to bring us your lasting peace and that you can just continue to work in us all throughout our days and lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Word of the day, Psalm 51, 10 through 13, Mission Driven Podcast. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Today's Mission Driven interview is with an educator, a father, a husband, and a passionate follower of Christ. He has worked as a religion teacher in Catholic schools for over 24 years and has a true heart for the Lord. Today, he will be sharing all about his love for scripture and why it's important to get in the word. He will also share about his very unique Uber ministry. He's been a friend and mentor for me for years. Let's give a big mission-driven welcome to Mike Supon. What's up? Hi, Big Joe. Hey, how you doing? Good. Doing good today. Doing well. Thanks for coming through uh, Mission Driven Studios here in Simi Valley, California. Great to be here. It's, it's summertime. Feeling good. Yeah, sun's out. Uh, feel, you've been driving around? 
I have been this morning. Yeah. But uh, it was shaken up a little yesterday with that yeah, earthquake. We had an earthquake with two in two days wow. back to back. Wow. Um, praying for all those who were affected by the earthquakes. But man, you know, God is real, you know, and uh, we, we definitely need God in time to trial. And uh, I'm so glad you said yes to coming on the show. You've been a big inspiration to me and mentor to me. And today our theme is get in the word. Oh, man. So you're like a, the word specialist I wanted to, to come to, to to ask for advice on this topic. Um, so can you tell the listeners a little bit about um, what you do? You've been working in Catholic education for 24 years. Um, so what, what, what brought you into that field of work? Well, my wife was a teacher at a local high school. Okay. And I was a landscaper. Loved nice. it. Loved being out in nature. Yeah. And I just thought, you know what? In the future, I'd like to check out and test it out, see if teaching w- would be something I do. I would do. And I was already leading Bible studies at a Catholic church. So I gave it a try. 24 years later, I love it. Wow. Love it. And so you work primarily with what grade level right now? Ninth and 10th grade. Ninth and 10th grade. Yeah, challenge. A big yeah, challenge. Yeah. Still moldable. But yes. tough. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, you know, I know you have a really unique kind of faith story of when you, you really came to dedicate your life to Jesus. So you mind sharing a little bit about your faith background and kind of what led you in this direction, especially to have a love for scripture? You bet. Well, my mom was one of those uh, Christian Catholic Christians that you knew she was in the word. If there was a problem, you needed a healing. She would stop right there and pray for you on the spot. Wow. She wouldn't say, I'm praying for you or pray for you tomorrow. She would stop and then she would pray for us, pray for me. And then at about 1920, my Aunt Marine said, hey, Mike, you should think about making God number one in your life. Wow. So, Which is pretty interesting, being we're a Catholic family, we're all yeah. Catholics. Yeah. That's assumed that God is number one. Right. But we know it, it, it shouldn't be assumed. So I, I thought about it. I said, you know what? Yeah, I need to put God number one. And I knew the answers were in the scriptures. So about 1920, I started getting involved in different groups. And basically, I've been reading the Bible just about every day since 21, 22, and now I'm 58. Man, so that's I'm incredible. Loving I'm loving it. So talk about like, you know, life giving. Oh, man. You know what? One of the most powerful scriptures was when Jesus stopped the devil with man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The thing about that, the words are in scripture. Yeah. The words, the prophets from the Old Testament, Hebrew scriptures, in the New Testament, the gospels, uh, amazing, the power of God. And, you know, I, I was leading a Bible study, and a lot of people, we started talking about salvation, eternal life, mm-hmm. and a lot of the people were confused, and they didn't know if they were going to heaven. Right. So, you know, I'm thinking, wait a second, First John 5 says, I'm writing to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you would know that you have eternal life. Yeah. And so the words are so inspirational. In fact, driving Uber, it's awesome. I mean, everyone I'm chatting with, and I'll say, hey, you want to hear a a Bible verse I memorized 30 years ago? Yeah. And uh, they're like, "Uh, yeah, go ahead. And I go, look, it has faith, hope, and love. What's not to love about that? And that's in Romans. Now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, you know what, in teaching and in, in driving around and the different things I'm doing, I mean, when you have faith, hope, and love, you got it. And I will say this, praying the scriptures, not just memorizing a Bible verse or a scripture, but praying them mm-hmm. uh, makes all the difference. When Huge. I'm not in the word, yeah, I'm not feeling the same. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like there's a disconnect. It's like, uh, it's like if you don't eat food, you're like, I'm hungry. Right. You, know, it's, you, you hunger right. for the word right. because there's nothing that can really nourish you like God's oh, word, man. you know, yeah. it's like really powerful. So, you know, I, you brought up a couple awesome things to talk about, but you know, how do you just jump in? You know, uh, you said that your aunt gave you a Bible. Yeah. Um, you, you, you kind of made a, a commitment to make God number one. Right. And then you just started, started reading. But what, what about listeners who are like, well, I, I can read the words. I hear my mass, you know, I, I see the scripture, but how do I get into it? How does it, you know, get into me? Right. You know what? The thing is, it seems complicated, but it's like learning how to play basketball. It's like getting into the different documentaries and mm-hmm. genres we're interested in, too. Well, you know what? If we're interested in God, we got to get into the only manual that exists for him, and that's the Bible. So yeah. uh, it's discipline. But I'll tell you what, I, I get up at least 45 minutes early every, every day, 
And I may be in a donut shop or, you know, one of the fast food places drinking coffee. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, after 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I don't want to put the book down. I don't wow. want to put the Bible down. Yeah. But I have to because yeah. I have to get to work. Yeah. I have to, uh, you know, during the school year, I have to teach. But I, I just, you get basically entrenched in the word of God. Now, you know what? In reading it, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible where we, we might not understand. But as you know, so I'll underline it, make a, a, a mark. And then maybe a year later, you know what it means by sharing and talking with other people. Wow. But, you know, the one thing about Jesus is, parables are most people think that he used those to teach people Mm -hmm. but actually he used those and they were meant for people not to understand unless they wanted to wow so they weren't meant for people to understand so the apostle said hey what did you mean by this and then he shared them so if we really want to know the meaning it'll come Mm -hmm. not maybe that day or that Mm -hmm. second yeah but the meaning does come will the whole revelation be there no that's going to be when we have eternal life at the end yeah but you know what? The scriptures are, are meant there for us to understand. And I'm telling you that uh, we all get inspired. And one of the best Bible verses in Colossians said that no matter who someone is, if they believe in Christ, they will have a word for other people. Yeah. So someone that's been following God for 30 years or one day, the priest, the nun, to the lay person, there is no one's higher than anyone else right. in God's eyes, yeah. right? We're so all things, children. We all yeah. have something and so that's the yeah. key is stop and listen. Yeah. You know, one time with the Bible verse, now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. You know, most of the time I focus on the joy and peace. Then one girl stopped and said, wow, a God of hope. Yeah. I just learned, it just was taught. Yeah. Right no, there. it's inter- interesting because uh, one scripture will speak to you differently at different points in your right. life. You might read a a scripture right now today as we're listening to this podcast and then, you know, 20 years later, read the same scripture and it's going to affect you differently or even next year or next week, next month. But also, yeah, the scripture strikes people differently, just like she, she reached on to the hope. Maybe she needs hope, maybe, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, so the word, it reaches us where we are and God knows exactly where we are. And, And the thing that most people know is the word is alive and active. Oh man, love that. It's a, it's living. I, yes. I, I go to conferences and talks and I, I hold up my Bible. I'm like, this is alive. God's yes. word is alive and active. And we have to, in order to activate inside of us, we have to get in it and we have to read it. And so something that's been helpful for me is like, like you said, um, getting in a routine. Yes. So you said every day. Every day. Um, every day. You go, you wake up early. You either go to a coffee shop, you go to a restaurant and you get in the word. And then, yes. you know, at different parts throughout the day, if you want to pull out your Bible, read it. Um, and that's one of the biggest things. Yes. What would you recommend? What's a good starting place? You say, hey, start with Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Start with Acts. Start with the Old Testament. Where do you recommend to start? I mean, I would st- I would start in the Gospels. Right. You know, I would go in the Gospels. What I usually do is I'll just I don't, there's not, I don't have a competition with myself or anyone else, but I'm just reading it every day. Yeah. Once I finish the Bible and mark it up. Yeah. That may take a year or two. Get, okay. I, I put it on the shelf and I get another one. Amazing. And I do the same thing. So I have a bunch of them on my shelf. It actually was my mom that my aunt asked me the question about putting God number one. My mom gave me this Bible when I was like 1920, yeah. signed it. I still have that Bible. And I have it at uh, at home. Wow. And so, yeah, you're right. The scriptures are living. They're active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, and, and and you know, Jesus is a sword. And and basically, I love what it says in Revelation 3.20, how it says, To those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So, you know what? Uh, getting in the scriptures by itself, unless they actually bring us to Christ, yeah, they're not doing much. So we got to remember right. that when we get in the scriptures, they bring us to Jesus. Totally, man. And you yeah. mentioned, you know, marking up your Bible. So oh. some people may not know, but hey, it's totally fine to write in your oh, yeah. Bible. Yes. Maybe took a little, write little notes. Um, I actually have my my Bible that I was given my freshman year of high school oh, um, nice. by Father Cowie, who recently passed away this year. But um, I like literally go through and I see different chapters of my life, things that I wrote down in the Bible and un- underline and highlight. And so it's fine. That can be helpful for you yes. to, to comprehend things better. For me, it does. Um, mm. I, I, I used to use a, a different pen with four markers or I'll get, find one that has seven and I mark it up. That's the way I like to do it. And you're right. Everyone does it a little differently. Yeah. But um, 
it's nice to know where it is. And yeah. then you know what? To basically make it a point to memorize scripture. Yeah. Not just to do that, but to get the word in our heart. So when I get up in the morning, my alarm goes off at 430, my eyes are closed. I just, I'm saying the scriptures in my head and wow. praying the scriptures and meditating on them. One of my favorite ones is search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious ways. See if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. So, I mean, there's just amazing scriptures. Each person's going to find different ones. If we all did that, yeah. then we'd all be sharing different ones, mm-hmm. you know, because we're one body. Yeah. Well, I know I'm so thankful to you because I'll get an early morning text from you <laughs> um, with whatever scripture passage you're in and like a reflection on it. And it's so helpful. But imagine that, yeah, if we were to do that, if we were to send text messages to friends of the scriptures that are influencing our life at the moment, how, how that could totally brighten up their day, their life, their month. Oh yeah. You know, that's so, so awesome. So yeah. So once you get in the word, then start sharing it. Oh man. Now, can you tell us, it's really cool, really unique about, you know, you started doing Uber, uh, how long ago? About a few months ago? Uh, yeah. About four or five weeks ago. Okay. About yeah. A, yeah, a month ago. And, uh, and it's kind of turned into this opportunity to share God with people. Can you tell us a little about how that came about? Well, you know what? Drive an Uber. Someone will be in the back seat and I'll say, hey, you know what? Well, first of all, it just came about because it came about, right? Yeah. And I'll say, hey, you want to hear the first Bible verse I memorized 30 years ago? Yeah. And they're like, sure, go ahead. And then I'll share the Bible verse with them. Bible verse. One day someone was uh, crying in the back and I go, yeah. hey, what, what's going on? Oh, my mom is, uh, is having uh, heart problems. Yeah. So, hey, do you mind if I pray for you? And then I prayed for him. And then, um, you know what? I just told him how I teach Old and New Testament in a uh, Catholic school. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, yeah, you know what? I can relate to the Old Testament. So then we shared some stuff because he was Jewish and it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So every day there's actually, I'm just saying I'm getting rewarded. Unbelievable. Nothing really, I'm going out of my way. It's just Jesus said, if we teach what's in scripture, we yeah. actually get a reward. Mm. And then I love, uh, just before the Our Father, he said, but you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. So as Catholics, as Christians, you know what? It's like in any event, you look to see what the outcome is. Well, yeah. the deal is we get rewarded when we help people and we bring them the Word of God. You know, as Catholics, we have the seven sacraments. And of course, we have the Eucharist. That wouldn't all be there if we didn't have Scripture. Mm. So we need to have Scripture behind that. Yeah. And then, you know what? I it just get blessed so often. And, and every day, even this morning, sharing different Bible verses with people. Yeah. Sometimes they'll say, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah. And then they'll go, wow, that was cool. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. I needed hope. I needed joy. And I needed peace. And actually... A lot of times I'll just say, look, even atheists want hope, joy, and peace. Right. And then I'll share the Bible verse about now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. You know, uh, in 150 AD, Justin, a martyr, would talk to people to see if, like, the soil was fertile so he can bring the message mm-hmm. to them. So every person was like that. Wow. And he, he's one of those saints we don't really look at too much. But... um amazing prophet verses on prophecy about Jesus being the Messiah and amazing the way you spoke to people. That was 150 AD. I mean, you, you got to put them up there with the greats. And the one thing you said was test and see if the soil is fertile. Oh, yeah. If they're ready to hear the gospel. It's like discipleship one oh one. Yeah. Know, once, once you commit and you say, Hey, I'm going to follow, follow Jesus. I'm a follower of yes. Christ. I'm a believer. I'm an unashamed Amen. believer. Um, then you got to start, you know, multiplying more believers. You got to start uh, making more followers, right. building, you know, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing yes. them in the name of the Father, Son, yeah. and Holy Spirit. That's what this podcast is based on, this mission that God's given us. I love it, Joe. You know what, teaching religion, it comes up in every class, how as Catholics we say, hey, our number one job, making disciples of all nations. But yeah. the truth is, we don't do a great job with that. Mm. And of course, I, I would put myself there. I don't know about you, but wait, I need to do better. And then, so, and, and then I'm saying, God, you know what? 
I'm just praying I'm in your will. And then things open up where I can share yeah. the gospel. Yeah. I'm not going to force it. No, totally. But they open up like that. And so you're right. Making disciples of all nations. It's, yeah. it's our number it's, one calling. Yeah, it is. It's, it's the overall mission. And then, you know, God will give us specific missions. Um, what is it a specific mission you think God's given you in your life? It could be current or it could be maybe one past that you've completed or still working on. Wow, that's a good question. But you know what? I've always looked at it like somewhere down the line that uh, comforting people and comfort and hospitality is just something, um, one of the really, really the, the virtues that seem to be a part of my life, mm -hmm. you know? So that's how I look at that. But as far as specific missions, mm -hmm. tell you what, I'm going to Spain in two weeks. So I've had a mission. I picked up my Spanish Bible. Yeah. And my mission is to read this every day. So I've been yeah. reading it every day and it's been helping uh, Spanish. So I memorized the Bible verse in Spanish and I've already sh shared it yeah. driving Uber, you know, yeah. around LA, you yeah. know, Spanish, it helps yeah. out. So that, that would be a mission. Let's say, I mean, being a mission to be a good father, good husband, and you yeah. know, that's, that, that's tough. That's yeah. the gospel message. There's a big calling there. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, what, what would you say? Um, you know, being, being a husband and I'm a husband as well, always looking for helpful advice. Uh, yes. and you know, it's, it's a sacrificial, like I always say, we're leading each other to heaven, you know, and, uh, it may not always be easy, but you know, how can you say like, as, as a, as a follower of Christ, how are you maybe helping to lead your wife to heaven and how has she helped you, uh, grow closer to God? Well, that's a good qu question. My wife, you know, I see how she prays. I see how, you know, she's in the scriptures trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Always trying to make me a better husband. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those processes. And when I look at it, I go, hey, yeah, we need to pray more. We do need to do this more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know she loves Christ. And, you know, on some things we work together. Now asking that question, because, you know, she has her job, I have mine. When we come home, you know, try to make it a little time to pray together. That's I nice. Think I, I think I fail at that a uh, lot, uh. but I'll say, hey, you know what? Let's stop uh, this TV show, stop this movie, and let's pray. Yeah. So I'll do that. And I would say when I get up in there every day praying for my family and my wife, she's always praying for our two boys and uh, praying for family members. So very important. Without Christ, you know what? I've been married 30 years. With Christ, it's, it's amazing. Wow. Amazing. Love it. Yeah. Now as what about uh, for the, the parents out there, you know, that can be a challenge. Like how do you, how do you bring the faith to your kids? Um, when do you start sharing it? You don't want to force it. Like we talked about, right. it's, like, it's a fine art testing the yes. soil, yeah. but also as a parent, you want to provide direction. So do you have any, any parenting tips on bringing Jesus to people, I, especially I'm, your kids? Sure. I memorized, I basically every Bible verse that, it talked about dads. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at one of wow. them. I think it was Hebrew. I'm sorry, Ephesians. They told the dads, do not exasperate your children. Be too hard on them. Make them give up. And I'm sure they're going to say, yeah, I've been hard on them at times, right? Yeah. There are things like that. And then bringing love to them. So what I do with my uh, sons, they're like I was, so they don't like long conversations. So you know what I do? I text them. Yeah. And I text them different scripture verses. And when they say, amen, thanks, dad. Yeah. I know I'm doing the right thing. Y you can't go wrong with encouraging, loving text messages. Right. I know I have one friend, Tom. He's been like a mentor to me. And he'll just text me randomly. You are good. Or you are loved. And, and it's just like out of the blue. And I'm just like, oh, thanks so much, Tom. And I, and I reply back. And you know, he's doing that for years. And actually, I met this one guy at a hotel eating breakfast and he said it's is his goal with his church to meet a new person every day and to pray for them and so he would reach he reaches out like once a year to me hey how's it going just want to check in wow. is anything i can pray for for you uh and i was like in indiana at a hotel and i was like wow imagine if we were to try to do that build a network of of reaching out and like you said it starts with a conversation jesus was telling parables he was just dialoguing right and if they were interested they went further right and, and that's it like discipleship you got to start telling your story i think one of the biggest ways to testify talk about what god's done in your life you know talk about what you know about god or or you know just be christ to others yeah you know what? A lot of times people ask us how we're doing mm -hmm. and if we're in a great mood. Yeah, yeah. We should say, hey, you know what? I'm in a great mood, but I got to be honest with you. It's 
It's because Christ lives inside of me. Not that I'm that great of a guy. It's that the word of God touches my heart every day. And that's something over the years of following God where I'm like, hey, a lot of times I said, hey, great. I'm doing great. Everything's good. Yeah. But then wait, it's bringing Christ to people. Yeah. That enlightens the day. And my mom, again, she never forced religion down her back, but she loved Jesus. And we saw that. And that's uh, kind of how I want to be. So the, she's an example uh, th- that I've had. She passed away about 15 years ago. Sorry. And uh, thank you. And uh, I mean, people loved her. And I do remember she, she, her main thing was if you said you had a worry yeah. or you were injured, mm-hmm. I, mean, I used to get these ticks, like, you know how you blink your eyes and different things? Yeah. And then she'd see that and she would say, hey, hey Mike, and then she'd pray for me. Yeah. And the ticks would go away. Yeah. I mean, wow. the power of prayer is for today. Now, yeah, we don't have the miracles like in the apostolic age because that was there for a reason to bring the gospel. But we do have the power uh, to ask God for miracles today yeah. and, and, and believe in them. We yeah. do have the power. So totally. not because we're great, but because Jesus is great. Yeah. No, it's, I often say it's the faith that activates the prayer. Yes. You know, and Jesus would often say to those, uh, one of my favorite scripture stories is uh, the woman who had an issue with blood. And she's like, if I can only touch him, I will, I will be healed. Wow. And, and Jesus says, I, he's in a crowd of people. He says, I felt power. I, I felt who touched me. He's, he felt power come out of him. And they're like, you know, who touched you? Everyone's touching you. You're all in the crowd. But he knew it's someone. And it was, it was that woman. And it was her faith right. that saved her. And right. that's, if we can have that same faith. That wow. if we could just touch Jesus, we could reach out. If we could ask him, it can, right. it can be done. All things can be done through Christ. Joe, that's a great point. Why was that put in scripture? Why did the apostles put it in scripture? Yeah. It, well, one reason is 2000 years later, we would actually read it and believe it's possible. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a great point. I love that. We got to, we have to believe we believe in God and we believe in a, in a God of miracles. And, you know, in Hebrews 11, it says that, that faith is the convictions of things hoped for. Yeah. Um, and that if we, in, in order to believe in God, we must believe that God will reward us. Yeah. I mean, that's a bonus. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a bonus. I love it. Well, uh, thanks so much for coming through. Uh, we really appreciate having you. Uh, hopefully you've inspired those listening. I have a, f- a couple fun questions to ask you before we go and we'll conclude with prayer. But uh, this is called Rapid Fire Questions with Mike Soup. Nice. Here we go. The first thought that comes to your mind. Favorite flavor ice cream? Pralines and cream, of course. Favorite fast food restaurant? Oh, man. Taco Bell. Let's go. Favorite color? Purple. Musical artist you admire? Oh, my gosh. Too many, but I was always a, a Neil Young fan. Okay. In the olden days. Let's do it. Uh, favorite movie ever? Actually, I like Sound of Music. That was nice. my first favorite mo- movie. Wow, classic. A book that you've read that's greatly impacted you? The most? I'd have to say the, uh, the books of Justin Martyr. Wow. 150 AD. Love it. Uh, what inspires you? Honestly, every day I get up, just seeing the day, that's inspirational. Favorite TV show? Uh, I'm a sucker for America's Got Talent. Okay. <laughs> if you could have a superhero power, what would it be? Oh my gosh, 100% flying. Let's do it. Flying. Talk about Uber ministry flying. That'd be fun. And by the way, <laughs> back to the, uh, the uh, musician I admired yeah. with Neil Young, it wasn't that I admired uh, his life, but I admired his music, the melodies he put in, yeah. and that he basically would not sell out to the mainstream. It had to be from his heart and yeah. his soul. Yeah. And hey, you know what? Let's pray for Neil Young to be saved. Let's do it. Yeah. Favorite fruit. Oh, gosh, it's got to be the papaya. Mm, life goal. I mean, I'd say every day following the Lord Jesus and uh, being the best dad and husband I could be. Love it. And uh, finish the sentence. God is beyond amazing. Well, Mike, thanks so much for your time. Uh, it's been been great having you. I love you as a brother. You know that. And I'm so thankful to continue to grow in my faith and to have a, a partner and companion like you along the way. So let's go ahead and conclude in prayer. Uh, I'll begin. If you mind close it, that'd be awesome. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, thank you so much for the opportunity to have this conversation with Mike, um, talking about getting in the word, how your word is alive and active. It's so important. It can speak to so many different people. The gospel is for everyone, Lord. 
We pray that those that are listening, that maybe if they're interested in growing deeper in scripture and knowing who God is through the Bible, that they can just really crack open the Bible and start reading today and not waste any time. And we ask that the, the word of God fills them. We ask that the word of God nourishes them. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Mike and for uh, him, him, his life for his work in education, uh, specifically at Chaminade College Preparatory, for all of his students, past, present, and future, for his wife, for his family. Um, Lord, we just ask that you continue to anoint and bless his Uber ministry and how, how he continues to disciple others and, and really talking about God to them on a regular basis. And anything Mike would like to add. And God, help us to slow down each day and to know that you're there with us. Help us to just in the silent of our heart to go to go deep inside and to seek you and pray for us to to really bring the gospel to the world. Thanks you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mike Supon, Mission Driven Podcast. Let's yeah. go. Thanks, Joe. What's going on? Mission Driven Podcast. This is Break It Down. I'm actually going to be talking to you about one of my own tracks. Really love this track. It is a wild, fun, and crazy track. Uh, it's called Mercy, and it was produced uh, by my friend Shane and his friend Travis. Amazing, amazing producers and so talented. And actually created it in 2016 for the AYC conference in Houston, Texas. Shout out Houston, Texas and AYC. Uh, my friend Dunn reached out, was like, hey, can you make a song that's uh, about mercy and the Beatitudes? And I was like, you got it. So we came up with this awesome track. It was a lot of fun making it. Um, the drop is kind of wild uh, and fun. And also it kind of has a little bit of a vibe of like uh, you can you can dance to it certain parts and then you can just while out certain parts. But it's it's deeply inspired by scripture and specifically the Beatitudes. And as I was reflecting today in scripture, there's a really awesome passage that I'd like to share with you. And it says, uh, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. So God's mercy is just so abundant, so big, so amazing that that's the gift. It's the gift of mercy. We can fail time and time again, but I'll always go back to God and he will have enough mercy to cover us and love us where we are so that we can always be purified, we can be blessed, we can be ready for what he has uh, in store for us. There's also some featured artists on this track and th those are some amazing kids actually. So we have Cooper, Kylie, and Quinn Williamson. They're just amazing, so much fun hanging out with them. They recorded their parts of the song. Uh, they're in the beginning and actually at the end of the song on an iPhone, uh, their mom's iPhone, and Yvette and Andy Williamson are their parents. Shout out to them. So thankful for them. And then also features Ali Sedek. And Ali is another amazing young person uh, who also recorded his part on an iPhone. His mom, Shauna, uh, sent it over to me and it's a lot of fun. So this track is called Mercy. Enjoy it. Live it. Know that God's mercy is abundant in your life, in the person next to you, the person next to them, in everyone's life. So, break it down with mercy. Let's go. What? 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 What are the merciful? What? 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 What are the merciful? What? 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 What are the merciful? For they will be shown mercy. Holy, for the God of glory only The tell story solely Saw souls go home Too high place where mercy's grown uh, Now you know, access granted, mercy shown We will never be alone God's been with us all alone Lord, we can feel your presence Even on mess, we can see your message So you call us blessed When we're poor, you call us blessed When we're pure, you call us blessed When we're weak, you call us blessed When we make peace, you call us blessed I guess we got the blessing uh, There is no question, God is good It's our lesson, yes we should keep I'm praying, but we fail almost daily. What we need is not a maybe incarnation through a baby. Now we stay the best free with mercy. We need it. Let's be it. mercy. Receive it. Believe it. Mercy. We need it. Let's be it. mercy. Receive it. 
believe it. We got the blessing, y'all. We got the blessing, y'all. We got the blessing, y'all. We got it. We got it. Uh, I just don't get it. I know life is worth living. Right now I'm feeling down because I need forgiveness. Yeah, I must admit it. Bye. His word and spirit, I know his grace abounds Where my sin is, okay, I'm done being selfish Heaven is where my help is, at times my heart gets restless I Cry out, I need your blessing, Lord, you always hear me Respond, I love you clearly, this is my mercy message I guess we got the blessing uh, There is no question, God is good, it's our lesson Yes, we should keep on praying, but we fail almost daily What we need is not a maybe incarnation through a baby Now we stay the set of free with Mercy. We need it. Let's be it. Mercy. Receive it. Believe it. Mercy. We need it. Let's be it. Mercy. Receive it. Believe it. We got the blessing, y'all. We got the blessing, y'all. We got the blessing, y'all. We got it. We got it. Jesus, thank you for blessing me with your love and mercy. I accept your invitation to heaven. I am a chosen child of God. Episode 4. God wants to give you more. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you gained something from this episode. Just want to give a special thank you to our mission-driven guest, Mike Supon. After listening to our interview, I actually was like, I have to go have coffee and break open the Bible with him. So I reached out. We went to a Starbucks. We literally sat there for over two hours talking about the word of God and jumping into scripture. It was such a blessed, great time. Also want to give a special thank you to my wife, Noah Melendrez, for word of the day, Psalm 51, 10 through 13. As I mentioned as well, if you like to soap and you want to go further and maybe even soap through my album Chosen, I have a soap that's available on my website at joemelendrez.com. Feel free to check it out. Also want to give a special thank you to the Halo app for being our sponsor today. In fact, we want to give you three months free with the app if you use the code word Mission driven. Simply go to www.hallo, H A L L O W, dot app, A P P, forward slash register. That way you can download the app immediately and start praying today. If you like today's episode, feel free to rate, share, comment, and subscribe. It really helps to get the word out. And hopefully this podcast will impact people in a very positive way that they can encounter Christ wherever they go. If you have any questions you'd like to submit for future episodes, you can email me at joe at joemelendrez.com or go to joemelendrez.com forward slash podcast and submit your questions there. You can also follow me on all social media at Joe Melendrez. Lastly, the song you heard today in Break It Down is called Mercy, and it's found on my latest album, Chosen, now streaming worldwide. Until next time, God loves you and stay mission driven. Peace. <laughs>